difficult calm was last week in Raleigh, North Carolina. Not only did it set attendance records, the quilt show was bigger than ever. QuiltCon also has a vendor hall where you can meet the people behind the brands, see new products, and take items for a test drive. And when I got home, the first thing everyone asked is what new things are in your suitcase? Well, stick with me and I'll show you what I found. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you wanna make. I have just hit 395,000 subscribers. I am so close to 400. If you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. QuiltCon is one of the major events in the quilting world. Great lectures, workshops, and quilts. Last year, I did a six-part series on QuiltCon, so I felt that I did not have to do it again this year. Truly, it was very nice just to walk around, enjoy the show, without the burden of lugging a video kit around with me. And I did bring home some goodies. I did arrive a couple of days early and I had a chance to look around the local museums. And they have a marble museum. And I had a fun time going in there to check out some of the marbles. And I came home with two in my brain colors and a couple of other ones in shades that I like. I actually don't know how to play marbles, but my friend Tracy, who joined me later in the week, she knew the rules and we had a quick game. And I did buy this marble game to come home with. So the next time my family together, we're gonna test our skills. When I came to quilting, one of the first quilters I admired was Latifa Safar. I loved her pickled beets pattern. I loved her graphic fabric line. And I showed up for her lectures and workshops on the MQG site. So when I discovered that she had a booth in the vendor hall, it was really hard not to fangirl all over her. I laughed at her brother who was helping her out in the booth and he was shocked at all the attention she was getting. He had no idea that she was such a big deal. So she was selling some yardage from Graphic and I really loved this fabric, but I only had a fat quarter of it. And I picked up a yard because I think this would look really good as a border fabric. And you might remember my video on when to quit, where I decluttered a 12 inch clammy and the clammy is designed by Latifa Safar. I realized that the 12 inch size was just too big for my stash, but I thought an eight inch would work since it would fit all the 10 inch squares I keep. But I was in no rush to buy it from Amazon because it's really quite expensive when you import it into Canada. But since Latifa was selling it at the show, I grabbed one. I also discovered that she has a full set of tutorials online on how to use it. Earlier this year, I didn't think a clam quilt was in my future, but I think I'm definitely gonna put it on the docket for 2025. Many quilt stores come to QuiltCon with select merchandise from their stores. And for me, it's a time to touch and fondle items I don't normally see. And I found these pieces of colored cork at Threaded Lines, whose brick and mortar store is in Texas. I'm not a big bag maker, but these pieces of cork in these brand colors caught my eye. And of course, my brain went off on a tangent on all the great bags I could make, like the Logan bag by Uh Oh Creations, the Weekender bag by Amy Butler, and the Get Out of Town bag by Annie. I do need to get my act together to get all the bits of hardware and notions so that I can make these and hopefully I can make them before my cruise in June. Every year, the Modern Quilt Guild has a mini quilt swap. You can swap by mail if you prefer, but many quilters choose to do their swap at QuiltCon. They have swap angels to ensure that everybody stays on task. Mine was Kristen Oakel, who gave us gentle nudges before the due date to ensure all was well. I knew who my partner was right from the beginning, Christy Carter and I could check her Instagram feed to see what her taste was like. You can also state your likes and dislikes on the application form. And our avoidance of the color black was something we had in common. For me, this was an exercise in fun and creativity. 
I have been drawn to quilts of different shapes lately. So mine was an improv hexagon. Actually, it was six triangles sewn together. Christy went another way, choosing an improv of a local farm with a barn block representing her part of the world. And she made a bag to go with it and enclosed a brief history on Southern Appalachian quilting. I wanna thank Christy very much. It's my favorite thing that I brought home from QuiltCon. I was on the hunt for a five inch ruler. Unfortunately, none of the big ruler companies had a booth at QuiltCon, but I did find this sidekick ruler by Jaybird Quilts. Jaybird is known for her patterns with triangles, diamonds, and hexagons, and she has developed a line of rulers to go with them. For instance, this one is based on the equilateral triangle, which is half a 60 degree diamond. So with this ruler, not only can you cut the triangles, you can cut the diamonds, but there's also lines so that you can cut the triangles at the end so that you can square up your row. I purchased it because I have fabric in my stash for a one block wonder. And this size is gonna be a whole lot easier to manage than the big 12 inch one I currently own. One of the hits of the show were these self-adhesive rinse away design sheets by Wonderful. They sold out twice before I could make it to the booth, but I did manage to snag myself this sample to take a test drive with. So what's so special about them? The key words are rinse away meaning they dissolve in water. You can draw your design on this side, it has a grid to make it easier, or you can print it from your printer. Then you just separate them from the back and you place them on your work. Needlework, embroidery, thread painting, applique, and quilting. I like that it's translucent so that you can still see the fabric underneath. And the back is just this lightweight material that doesn't gum up your needle. And when you're done, you can just rinse away the sheet. I am still a newbie to this machine embroidery quilting world, but I can already see multiple projects and UFOs where I can use these. I did not walk the whole vendor hall until the very last day when I wandered into the Paintbrush Studios booth. Paintbrush Studios is known for working with organic cotton and they do their printing in the USA. Now you might think that because last month I counted all my fabric and figured out that I had 15 years supply that I might not want to buy any more. However, I found this lovely bee fabric and I always need bee fabric to cover the honey jars that my son the beekeeper sells in the fall. And then I saw this really fun panel that reminded me of the rollerblade scene in Barbie. Look at all these boom boxes and roller skates. Do young people even know what a boom box is? They had a collection of fat quarters to go with it, which turned out to be a panel as well. Look at this. So all the fat quarters are just on one sheet and you cut them out. Now you think that might have been it, but I found this fabric as well with the suitcases on it. And you might remember this old UFO kit that I have in my stash. And I just thought that it would be a perfect backing because I already had some fabrics with travel adventures already in it. I guess this is how my stash got so big. Luckily, it was the last day of the show and everything was on sale. It was lovely to see so many people that have been guests on Karen's Quilt Circle. There was Geeky Bobbin, Kim Soper, Mary Fonz, Stephanie Hackney, Verushka Ziarte, Suzanne Paquette, Brandy Meslowski, Kendall McCallum, Alita Crawley, Sarah Lefebvre, and Young Min Lee. Young Min Lee was busy teaching several sold out workshops, but we did manage to get coffee together one morning. And I was admiring her earrings, made out of tiny Oxa mobile shapes. And she gave me this lovely kit so that I could make my own, which I think is gonna be my slow sewing project this week. As I unpacked it, I realized I could use this shape and technique for some Christmas decorations or for a window mobile. We had a lovely gathering of Karen's Quilt Crew on the Friday morning. 
We meet once a month in a stitch and chat and we talk about what's going on, but nothing beats meeting in person and sharing a warm hug. And I provided some beads and people could make their own bracelets if they wanted to. We had a lot of fun taking photos and sharing them. And I have several. My absolute favorite part of QuiltCon are the friends, both the ones I know from before and the new ones I make every year. And I'm really glad that I chose not to work the show and just have fun. So I'm going to leave you with a montage of 10 quilts that I thought were noteworthy. Next year's QuiltCon will be in Phoenix, Arizona from February 20th to 23rd. If you are interested in attending but don't know what all the hoopla is about, I'm going to leave my QuiltCon playlist here. Take care and I'll see you next time.